So you're a small group of PvP chads that mow down clans and rack up box after box of their hard-earned AKs. Eventually, you're gonna take one too many kits from the wrong group, and they're gonna come marching up to your door with a box of rockets in hand. Will you be ready? Of course you will. In the Red Room. The Red Room is a no-compromise, highly fortified main base for four to six dedicated players that want every single luxury. It can be built off of any standard 2x2 with a triangle airlock and expands easily from the humble beginnings all the way to a safe and secure monster of a main base. Where do we begin? Four disconnectable TCs, four separate compound gatehouses, a spacious, highly protected compound with turrets on the ground and overhead, a compact inner ring with 360 degree coverage from peak downs and auto turrets, four mobility chutes to easily maneuver through the base, a simple 2x2 two two starter core and spacious second floor, and a semi-open core third floor with extremely high mobility and storage that's covered by 14 auto turrets. 14 bedrooms spread across three different floors, six large batteries that are positioned completely away from any area that would be commonly pummeled with rockets, a 360 degree wide gap shooting floor with a wide array of angles and embrasures, including heli peaks, breach peaks, and four sets of roof peaks, a spacious and defendable roof covered by 12 auto turrets, and all of this other than a couple wide gap tiles are built off of the main base TC, so it's simple to build and so stable that you can send a metric f ton of rockets through the base, and all of your vital spawn points and battery rooms will remain completely intact, turning any kind of raid into an absolute nightmare. The price of the base is easily manageable without endless grinding if your group is active, and the numbers you're looking at here take into account every single endgame upgrade and luxury such as double armored doors and a full HQM core, so prior to making these expensive upgrades, you can expect the base to cost significantly less than what you see here. Let's take a tour of the base. Really quick before the tour, this base was built live over at twitch.tv slash templetaps. I'd be super grateful if you stopped by next time I'm live or drop me a follow. The streams have been super fun and everyone had their own little part to play in the making of this base. So thank you to everyone who participated in the build. I love you guys. Starting outside, we have four identical disconnectable external TCs. With just a couple pieces of twig, we can sever the overlapping build privilege and replace our main TC if we lose it during a raid. And then reconnect them just as easily. Heading into one of our four identical gatehouses, we see vertical metal embrasures allow us to check for door campers outside or fight back into our compound during a raid. Entering into the compound, eight auto turrets first cover the ground space, half of which are almost impossible to shoot out with bows because they sit behind chain link fencing. Additionally, there are four more sneaky auto turrets hiding up above that cover any potential breach of your outer shell. They're reasonably shielded from outside fire as well, so they significantly complicate a raid path through the compound. Heading in through either side of the shell, we're greeted by a daunting network of inner peak downs sectioned off by prison cell gates and double doors, so you can completely control which areas raiders have access to and further slow them down. The ring is covered throughout with a couple of turrets, and you can feel free to add more at your discretion. All four corners are symmetrically equipped with their own bedrooms and mobility chutes that allow for easy traversal up and down the base. Heading up our first BDSM furnace jump up brings us to the second floor living space. Four honeycombed loot rooms, a locker, and a few utility items fit easily on this floor while leaving plenty of room for your group to maneuver before the base is expanded. Heading down our second BDSM furnace jump up takes us to the 2x2 starter core. This core is a standard 2x2 configuration that'll be simple and familiar to you if you've built one before. Heading up our third and final BDSM furnace jump up takes us to the semi-open core. Here we have an array of 14 well-separated auto turrets that can't be effectively splashed and completely lock up the loot space and inner peak downs from being accessed, even if the shell is broken through. The peak downs themselves offer excellent angles into the entirety of the ring and are blocked by frames so that you can't fall through and raiders can't ladder up. 
Another four bedrooms open out into the space as well. Heading up to the fourth floor, we see some communal deployable space for whatever extra deployables you might need, although I chose lockers in the tour. And another six bedrooms, so even your weekend farm bots have a cozy place to sleep at night. Or you can have a third spawn point for yourself to re-kit and get back into the fight, even if the entire core is destroyed. Six large battery compartments remain safe and difficult to reach, even if the base is being obliterated by explosives, so even if half the base is crumbling, raiders won't be able to breach without dealing with each and every auto turret in their path. The wide gap shooting floor provides ground and air angles covering the entire compound and deep outside, and are completely unlaterable as well. Hopping up on any of the four corners allows additional angles and peeking up onto our roof to discourage top-down raids. Jumping down below gives us a perfect vantage point to fire down on raiders attempting to breach the shell. Jumping up either side of our roof access points brings us to the top of the base. Here we have four unbowable turrets on the corners, six center turrets that are extremely difficult to HV rocket out, and another two turrets for good measure that can be exposed or hidden at will. With 12 turrets total covering the space, good luck landing a scrap heli on this roof. Standard roof peak downs give us a few additional angles in and around the compound as well, and that pretty much makes up the base. So now that you've seen it, let's learn how to build it. We're gonna begin this build with our starter already built. I'm gonna assume you've built a standard 2x2 with a triangle airlock. You're free to arrange the starter in any way you see fit for your group, but this is just how I like it. The entire thing should be HQM on the outside, and at least one wall frame inside should be sheet metal, preferably multiple. This will add additional stability during your core pummel. Because this is an intermediate level build, I'm going to build everything at its final level of material upgrade and assume that you have some basic build knowledge on things such as furnace jump ups, honeycombing, etc. If you're brand new to building, I highly recommend checking out one of my beginner friendly videos first to get a feel for all of these techniques. Start the build off by adding honeycomb to the sides of the base. The two triangles immediately on the left and right have to be sheet metal, although you could leave the center one stone as it's only there to prevent splash damage. The downside will be the stability during a core pummel raid will be slightly lower. With the honeycombing complete, come down to your front triangle airlock and create a jump up to the second floor. This is done with two sheet metal walls, a garage door in the middle, and a furnace jump up on the end. With the jump down into the core complete, we need to make a jump up to the second floor so that we can get there. This is done on the opposite side. You want the jump up on the opposite side to the jump down. I'm placing fridges in this empty triangle, but really you could put whatever you want. You could use lockers, or in the early game before the rest of the base is built, you could temporarily put a large battery here as well. Now we're going to fill out the second floor. This is quite simple because it's symmetrical on every side. It's a full sheet metal two triangle honeycomb loot room. This is what it should look like from above. It's perfectly symmetrical on every side. Eventually, you should fill out all four of these rooms with four boxes each, and then seal them off with a window. Make sure the soft side of the window is against the half shelf. When they intersect like this, it becomes hard side, so both sides are hard side. We're going to place one divider wall on this floor, but you have two options for where to put it. Place it here if you want better mobility, and here if you want a higher raid cost from the top down. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose the mobility option. Make sure that the soft side faces towards the jump down into the core. Come around and wall in the rest of the second floor. Above the jump up and jump downs, we're going to create standard stone half shelves.
This empty triangle here is going to be used for our furnace jump up up to the third floor. The empty triangle on the opposite side will be used as a locker. Close the entire floor in with sheet metal, except for the furnace jump up. Every single empty socket on this floor is going to get a garage door inside of it. So just fill the entire thing with wall frames and place the garage doors as you get them. At the time of this recording, there's a bug preventing lockers from being placed properly in triangles. So just pretend that I did this manually. For you, it should be easy to place just in the center of the triangle like so, with a window frame on top of it and an armored window when you go offline. On one side of our separator wall, we can place a research table with a large box underneath of it. And then on the other side of the separator wall, we can place a repair bench with two small boxes underneath of it. If mobility isn't a concern, you could also litter the rest of the floor with boxes as well, but I don't recommend it. There's plenty of storage in this build already. Auto turrets can be placed above the jump up and jump downs once they become available and you have a power source. And that completes the second floor of the starter unit. Before we can move on to compounding in, let's build our shell footprint. It's incredibly simple and symmetrical on all four sides. Come to any of the sides of your base, place a square foundation and a triangle off of each end. This is what it should look like. Come to one side and place a triangle foundation and then two squares inwards. Remove the outer square and the outer triangle and you're left with the shell footprint. Now we can work on claiming our build spot and preventing ourselves from getting TC griefed. To this end, we'll do the build out for our external TCs. Build out three square foundations and one triangle, then remove the three squares. This is how we're going to get our wide gap. Build back with triangles until you reach this spot where it looks like a square could go on the right. Remove the two triangles on the side and back so that you're left with this perfect hourglass shape. From the hourglass, this is where our gatehouse will go, with a square in the middle and two triangles. Now build out four square foundations, and then two triangles on the end. This is where our mini Satori disconnectable external TC will go. Let's build it now. Upgrade the innermost triangle to sheet, and the outer one to stone. Two sheet half walls will go on the left, and a full wall on the right. This is important. A TC goes in the middle, and then you can block it off with a glass window or a door. The glass window will give you a full 8 rockets of protection at the end, the door will only give you 6 if you use a garage door. It's up to you. Now remove these 4 squares. If the twig decays before you're ready to start your compound or somebody shoots it out, don't even worry. You can rebuild the entire thing backwards from the TC like so. Now let's build our gatehouses so we can compound in the base. Come down and upgrade all of this. Connect these two foundations together with wall frames so they don't decay. Now build out your gatehouse. Wall frames in the middle and window frames on every side. Make sure that all of the soft sides face towards the compound, even on the inside of the gatehouse. Vertical metal embrasures go in all of the window slots and double doors go in both of the wall frames. Use these two twig triangles as buildup to help in placing barricades over the top of the gatehouse. Now we can connect the gatehouse to the external TC. Place two floor frames off of the gatehouse and two floor frames off of the external TC. Although it's currently eight rockets to destroy the external TC, it's only four rockets to disconnect it because the frames are stone. So upgrade them to sheet metal whenever you can. You'll also need to upgrade the foundation here and the wall frame here as well. Now if our main tool cupboard is destroyed in a raid, raiders will not be able to build on the base or grief it. But we won't be able to replace our own main tool cupboard either unless we disconnect the externals first. Do so with a foundation here and a roof tile like so. Now you'll be able to replace the main TC and then you can reconnect the externals. Now we can compound this thing in. It's extremely simple to get an airtight compound with this design. Align yourself straight with the gatehouse, and then strafe out and place the wall just touching the gatehouse. Repeat the same process on the other side.
Once you've got one on each side of the gatehouse like this, position yourself directly in the middle of them so that you're in the center between and facing outwards. Strafe back towards one and place the wall. For the final wall, you may have to pull it with your mouse to close the gap. And there you go, a perfect compound. Now you can get to smelting all of that ore. Place the furnaces in between the joints of the two walls on either side. This will ensure that you don't have to destroy them later because they block some kind of construction on the shooting floor. On the front and back of the shell, you're going to have walls, but on each side, you're going to have an entrance. Place a double armored door in the middle if you have it, and then armored windows on the sides. The entrance is identical on both sides, and then everything else becomes a sheet metal wall on both floors. On all four sides of the shell, you're going to place two wall frames on the edges of the triangle foundations like so. You can leave them stone or upgrade them to sheet for extra stability during a raid. On the two sides that have exits, you're going to want to place prison cell walls in the frames above and double doors in the frames below. This will allow you to section off the shell during a raid and still fire rockets and bullets through the prison cell walls. This next step has to be done in precisely the right order, so pay attention. Come down to each of the four corners and place a full wall and a half wall like so. Place a stone floor frame on top of it and a sheet metal floor frame at the very top. Then you can destroy the buildup. It's extremely important that you do this in the right order for the peak downs to place later like so. If we did it in the reverse order, with the peak downs placed before the frame, you can see here that the frame will not place, so don't mess this up. This frame is vital to the stability of the base during a raid. We're almost ready to expand to the next floor. All we have to do now is create our chutes up the corners and our peak downs. Come down to one of the four chutes and put a double door on one side and a wall on the other. The orientation of the wall and the door aren't terribly important, so feel free to have them opening whichever direction you want. Now place a window frame on both sides of the chutes and fill them with windows. Finally, place a ladder hatch in the stone floor frame, not the sheet metal one. And now all that's left to do is fill out the peak downs. You use triangles on the corners like so, and then a square on the side with triangles on each end. Because this build is aimed at intermediate level players, I'm not going to go over the specifics of how to deploy your bedrooms. But you can consult any of my prior builds if you need a step-by-step -step guide. There's bedrooms in most of them. A side note before we move on to the next floor. If you get HQM rich, I highly recommend coming down and upgrading the wall outside of the triangle airlock to HQM and potentially even the wall on the opposite side outside of the TC room like this. So on to the third floor. The first thing we're gonna do is just completely surround it in sheet metal walls. Identify where your jump up is and find the triangle that's directly diagonal to its right. Right here. This is going to be one of our two jump ups to the fourth floor. Build it up now. Then you're going to look diagonally on the other side from it and build the exact same thing. It's symmetrical on both sides. Place a stone frame on the end of every part of the 2x2 honeycombing, like so. This will allow us the stability to immediately close in the entire floor. This is where it gets a little unusual. You're going to place a sheet metal square roof right here and on every second socket afterwards all the way around in a circle. Up until this point, we've been using a 2x2 two two footprint, but as you can see here, we're now switching to a circle footprint. That closes off the floor. Now that we're secure inside, we can start outfitting the place. 
Come to the corner of each mobility chute and add a window frame on one side and a double door on the other. You can utilize the clipping portion of the inner peak down to get a good view into the floor. There are six empty triangles beside the places that are going to become our bedrooms right now. They're on each side like this. We're going to create auto turret pods in every single one of these triangles like so. Make sure that these shelves are sheet metal so that you can't destroy both auto turrets for four rockets. Every single triangle that's positioned on one side or the other side of the bedrooms are going to be used for this purpose, so go all the way around. Now place auto turrets inside every single triangle and on every single half shelf, except obviously the ones we're going to use to get to the next floor. Double armored doors can go on this set of bedrooms or the top set of bedrooms. You probably don't need both, but you at least want one set of your bedrooms to be a higher raid cost. As of the time that I'm recording this video, like I mentioned earlier, there's a bug with lockers changing their hitboxes. Ordinarily, you should be able to put a barbecue in the back of these bedrooms if you place it in between the bed and the locker. The last small box should also not stick out through the door. Now we can outfit our semi-open core. Place a half wall and a low wall symmetrically on all four sides like this. Then use this box configuration to place four large boxes in each space. Don't worry about the accuracy of these boxes too much, it really won't affect anything. Come around and place this triangle shelf above each of the four box formations. Once they're placed, hop up on top and place these two large boxes like so. It's going to be the same on all four corners. The last thing we can do on this floor is place these two garage doors right next to where we jump up on this floor and on the opposite side. We can't do this symmetrically on all four sides because the other two corners where we would want to do this have square ceilings, not triangle ceilings, so it wouldn't actually be possible. Now we can come up to the fourth floor. The first thing we're going to do is create an elevator jump up off of the spaces here. You're going to want to stand on the square adjacent to it and then build the elevator towards yourself. This should all be sheet metal. Repeat the process on the other side. You can guard these jump ups with shotgun traps and then we're going to turn around to the other side of them. So right on the back side this triangle here we're going to create jump ups to the next floor so leave them open at the top. These ones can also be guarded with a shotgun trap. With that out of the way, we can start to close this floor in. We're going to surround it all the way with sheet metal walls, but first we need to add wall frames here and place double doors inside of them. With those four double doors placed, you can surround all of the rest of it with sheet metal walls. And this is what it should look like when you're done. Technically you can put the entire ceiling over this floor before you outfit anything, but for the sake of visual clarity, I'm going to build the entire floor with no ceilings on it so you can more easily see what I'm doing. The first thing we're going to do is create these four battery storage rooms like so. They're built parallel to the jump ups onto this floor. Now we can move around to the side of the battery compartments here where there's four exposed squares. In each one of these four squares we're going to place a bedroom. The extra two bedrooms can be placed on the corner squares here and diagonally opposite on the other side.
The last couple things we do on this floor are fill this triangle space on each side with another battery for a total of six large batteries stored. And then come around to each of the roof jump ups and place a double door on each side to form some separation and an airlock. Feel free to add additional double doors or garage doors to section off the portions of this floor if you'd like. Now these two corners on the ends have a lot of empty space in them, so feel free to put whatever deployables you'd like inside. I used lockers in the intro cinematic, but you could also use mixing tables, tier 1 and tier 2 workbenches, additional repair benches, whatever you want really. Now I'm going to close everything off except the roof access. Realistically, you probably would have wanted to do this before outfitting the floor, but who knows, the order is up to you. Now let's build out the shooting floor. This is identical on all four sides, so I'm going to build it with symmetry. Come down to your wide gap footprint and place a triangle, a square, and then another triangle. Then demolish the first two. Repeat the process on the same side so you have your wide gap footprint like so. You're going to want the outer triangles to be sheet metal, as with these frames as they go up. The center ones can be stone though. All of the floor tiles surrounding your shooting floor should be sheet metal and all of the window frames should be stone. You're gonna place sheet metal triangles off of the main base on either side here, and a square off of the main base on either side here as well. This is what it should look like when it's done. Make your way around the entirety of the wide gap and the squares beside them with window frames. Make sure you don't place them on the inside corners of those squares though. All of the ceilings here are gonna be placed off of the main base, not the wide gap. This is important so you can shoot at heli through the gaps in the front. Now fill it up with embrasures. The shooting floor is almost done at this point. We just have to do the pillars at the corners. So come outside and build yourself out two square foundations like so and demolish the inner one. Upgrade this one to sheet metal and place four wall frames like so. You can optionally upgrade the front two to sheet metal. Place three chain link fences here and one chain link gate here and then cap it off with a ceiling. Place your auto turrets inside as far back as possible. Now build your way up to the top with two sheet metal frames on the front. Above them, two sheet metal half walls with the soft sides facing in. After that, place your auto turret shelves here. The auto turret should be rotated such that it has visibility across both axes and placed a little bit farther forward so that it can shoot down. Now we cap it off with another sheet metal floor and then place two stone window frames like so and another two on top. Head inside and build up your breach peaks like so. Feel free to add small boxes if you wish to gain steeper angles down into the compound. Heading up to the middle portion, place a stone floor here and doorways on either side. Cap it off. If you have industrial doors, you can use them here to gain visibility while protecting yourself from outside fire. Ensure the doors open the same directions as shown here so that you can traverse easily. Place horizontal metal embrasures up top and vertical ones down below. Every part of the shooting floor is perfectly symmetrical on all four sides, so this is what it should look like at the end. At some point you're going to want to add auto turrets in front of each of the doors leading out to the wide gaps on the right side like so. If you're truly rich and you have an abundance of auto turrets, you may want to also place auto turrets in a similar position in the shooting floor itself to prevent people from taking control of it during a raid. A similar luxury you might include is these auto turrets in the compound next to the entrance to each of your gatehouses. It's always good to have redundancy in your auto turrets. Now we're done with the shooting floor, we can move on to upgrading the roof. The first thing you're going to want to do is build a half shelf elevator out onto the roof on both sides like so. Auto turrets can go in both of these. Now build your windmill towers on all four corners of the base identically. You want to use two half walls here, an auto turret right in the middle, and then a floor on top. With the floor in place, you can create a wall frame on either side and protect the auto turret from long range bow fire with these chain link fences. Then you can create your turbine tower up to the top. When building this in game, you can use netting to help you climb it up and down while building.
Now we can come down to the center of the roof and create some additional auto turret spaces. Half of these are going to be protected with low walls and half of them are not. This is because the low walls have significant vulnerabilities in that you can crouch under auto turrets that are protected by low walls and they don't have as much vision. However, they're much more resilient to HV rockets from the sky, so a mix of both is best. And the last thing we need to do here is add the battlements. We're just going to use regular roof tiles all the way around. Feel free to customize the battlements to your liking. There are so many different variants you can use with higher or lower costs and different functions, such as embrasure ramp peaks, barricade battlements, suspended peak downs, etc. And that's pretty much the build. The last thing I'll show you is luxury upgrades you can make as you can afford them. The first one is that if you're going to use all six large batteries, eventually you're going to need six windmills. So two more towers can go here. The next thing is that we can add auto turrets inside the shell. We can get two of them going on the sides of the shell here, and if we really want, we could do another on the ends. While we're in the shell, we can also add additional separators on the side so that the door path rate is a rockets to get to the entrance. Coming out into the compound, we can visit the four corner support pillars and upgrade the wall frames to sheet metal to reduce the chances that somebody uses this spot as a vector of attack into the shooting floor. Heading up to the roof, we can upgrade the turret guards to reduce the chance that anybody tries some nonsense in a scrap heli with a bunch of launchers. Heading inside the shooting floor, we can add four sets of identical sheet metal double doors to break it up even further. This way, if somebody blows into the shooting floor, they only gain control of a small portion. Much like we did in the shell, we can add two additional separators in this floor as well, just so that it's broken up into four sections. And lastly, why not throw a couple of searchlights up on the corners? And that pretty much makes up the build. A ton of people assisted in the construction of this build, especially since I did a lot of it live with almost 30 people watching. I don't want to accidentally leave a name out, so I'm just going to say that I had a super fun time building this base live, and everyone who helped me by asking questions, giving suggestions, and generally just keeping me company made this a way more enjoyable experience. Seriously, I love you guys. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.